Welcome to Craft and Cocktails, powered by Limelight Wired. I am your host, Chris Werner. Today we're chatting with Alvaro Torino Grosso from ATG Design. We're about to take a look at the nuts and bolts of his MA2 show file built for large EDM acts. Warning, industry secrets ahead. This is awesome. This is so great. Can you uh, take us through a show file a little bit? Can you tell us what you're staring at all night long? Yeah, I'm going to show you actually um, one of my files that I use for um, place to also like more like private files, but it's in the same way that I put on Omnia because that's my my muscle memory is based in that. So right, sure. I put them in the same way that I have this file. If you don't mind, show us the show file. Tell us uh, what your workflow looks like. Uh, cool. So you guys see it? Yeah. So we're looking at uh, one of your MA screens. Yeah, so this is actually my my screen number two. So before I show you the show file, Chris, I like I'm a person that I like to have everything in front of me because when you're doing a electronic music that you have many sounds to catch, I like to be like a, almost in, you know like at at, at, the, at, at at the moment that I want something, have it right there. So my show file is pretty simple, and I'm, I work every day to make it more simple to have everything in front of me. So in the screen number two is what I have my color palette. And I have my color palette by everything, by row. So this is- Okay, sorted by, by fixture type. By, by fixture time, yes. So the, the first row is everything. So all the lights go to red. And then the, the row, the, the row that are coming down by fixture time, my beams, my spots, my a spot two on my EV light, let's say like uh, if you have vipers, I put I pass the vipers in my spot, but if I have a uh, meters, I I use I put those in my spot two. So okay. my watch lights and my LED uh, beams or strips, whatever I have, like they can be my, my blades. Um they can be uh, any any LED bar. So that's how I have my actual file. Got um, it. Okay, so we've got um, in looking at the columns, we've got colors. So we've got uh, we've got some white, red, blue, magenta, cyan, amber, green, yellow, Congo, CTO. And then is the next set of columns? Those are our positions. Panto. Those positions? are positions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Those are positions in the same um, the same rule. Everything by line. So my position for everything. So this this was a very small show that I did in Park City. Uh, it was a very small venue with a few lights, and, and I only made four positions because it didn't make sense to have 20 positions. Um, and I make only four positions by light, and this is my, my position right here. Usually when I'm doing something a little bit more, you know, like festivals or, or something that require more, uh, it is more light that you have to be more creative, um, uh, and play more with uh, moments, you know? I have like, at the most, five position, uh, no, five, like 15 position for light, for, okay. for, for type of light. And you are uh, executing these, uh, you're handling timing via program or executor time to, to give it a fade if you want it to have a movement. Yes, time. so, yes, so I have, um, so this is the screen number one. So if I show you my screen, what well, the, the smallest screen that's gonna be in the console, right? So here I have uh, some macros where I can say, okay, so I want the position time to be uh, 10 seconds with fade time. So I just type 10 on the console okay. and all my position gonna have uh, 10 seconds of fade time. And I have the same with movement, with pan and two movement and with color. This color, I actually like to have like a 0 0.35, 0 0.15, 0 0.25, especially when I have C and Y fixtures, I like to see a little fade. Right, you know, and, and to I align your, your LED fixtures with the C and Y and get them aligned. Yeah, LED fixtures, I like to see a little fade, but I'm not too much fade there that you see uh, variance colors. Just something like, I don't know how to, like a little switch. So yeah. I like to keep it in point thirty-five. And um, my movement effects time, where where I have it in the screen number three. So right here I have uh, my goggles, uh, and I have movements here, and I have uh, again because I like to have 
everything in front of me. I don't have to have three or four pages. I only have one effect of pan, one effect of fill, and I can change here the the groups of the of the. Of, let's say I have a till yeah. right now in zero group. It's going zero to three sixty, like like a wave, right? But uh, let's say that I want to have odd and even. I just have to hit that macro and hit two, and then when I go to my effects, it is doing odd and even. You can do. You can type any group that I want. Um, if you want to do one, just to have everything at the same time. Sure. I only have one pan and one tilt, and I modify those with this macro for grouping. And um, this one is another one. This this is uh, to change the, the the size. So if you have medium, big, extra big, small, so I change the size and the grouping of the effects. It's only two buttons and um, have like. A lot of combination for those. This is so clean. Yeah, I like to. I like to keep it simple. Uh, I do some programming for another LDs that are, they don't have time to program or they are not my users. Um, they came from another console. So I try when I program something. Sync like that, I learned that in Omnia because uh, a lot of times LD doesn't have time to program. They have to use what I have. So I have to program in a way that they can learn the show file in, in one hour. And he's very impressed how good they run the the, the, the show file, my show file, because they learn it like in one hour and the more buttons they press, they they get into it. So And how do you get part. yourself out of the weeds? So when you've you've got this in an effect and that in an effect and these things are different sizes, what is your your bailout to get back to a reset position? Okay, cool. Uh, so like for example I have my um, in this, uh, let's say that I have a lot of stuff going on, uh, robots, um, prisms. This never happened, but let's say that I'm like that, right? Yeah. And I want to reset. I just hit like off all, and then everything goes back to open global, and it cleans all my 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 movements. So it's like a fresh start, right? So mm -hmm. the way that I program is like. Every song, so at the end of the, when the DJ is mixing um, to the other song, I'm already preparing stuff. So for example, I go to, um, for instance, in the next song that I'm gonna play, I know that it's a slow song and I wanna have some kind of like a prism or some global rota rotating, something very, very more uh, intimate. So let's say I know that the global number five is something very cool, like a cone or something. I have macros where I am um, in my screen number one, I say load. Okay. I say here, okay, it's going to be uh, five, right? And yeah, then yeah. I have ready that global for the next song. So, so how, how deep can you go in this, right? Like if, if the next song is a big change, how uh, how in this workflow do you get to say you know I want to take most of these lights to blue and some to green and I want to get rid of the gobos in these five and I want to slow down the effect in this one? How can you stack a sequence of of commands for a big change? I can actually make macros like a saying like preparing loops like for example having a macro to say go to this position and off this one and load that one and go to gobo number five. I have like a loop for that. But um, I really enjoy it because it, that's why that's the part of like, I really enjoy me going and switching for everything because yeah. a lot of times the DJs, I'm always watching a uh, show control to see what they're playing, what is coming next. But a lot of times they play much of personal much that they have. And if we, I was, let's say if we have a, something that it goes, a, a movement that it goes with a song that I thought that is going to come, but it's a matchup. Um, it doesn't go with the music at the moment, so I like to almost do everything at last minute. So, so as soon as the drop is there, I'm with the drop going. You know, like for example, if it's some, I have a lot of flyouts too that I use a lot. Um, in this is a curious, the two hundred one to to twenty. I have a lot of flyouts and I can change pages and have more and more and more. 
where it completely changed the it completely changed i don't know if you have if you can see something on the stage well i don't know if you can see but uh you know it completely changed the whole uh look you know i just used that fly out at that moment and it gives me a lot of room to be accurate with the music and it, are there uh, also faders that you're using? Like, are you um, yes, taking advantage yes, of the ability yes. to pulse things? I am. Um, let me. I forgot to show you the fader part. Um, they are on the M3. So I forget. After we have movement here, all the movements and um, doubles movements. I have a stroke. Just, just the stroke. No, no intensity on it. So I can have like here. I have my demon. My my. My fader with all my dimmer effects, so the strobe is like only if I want to add some shorter effects on top of those dimmers. But uh, this doesn't have any dimmer information, just dim information. So I have, you know, some dimmer effects, and I do the same dimmer effects in all the lights. And um, if you let's say that I want, um, I know that I want to use um four blocks effect, right? In the next song, I don't go to all the cues. I have some shortcuts where I, when I say four blocks, it goes automatically here to my four block dimmers off. I don't want it on because I might have the buttons on or not. So they are completely, they just load the cue off. So when I bring the fader up is when they actually uh, come alive. So those are some shortcuts and I have some feedback that you don't really need this, but uh, I do it because um, sometimes I like to see it, you know, what I'm doing and I have feedback on those macros that I say, okay, so the last button that you press was four blocks. Okay. You, even, you can see it here that it's in four blocks, but if I'm working in that screen, I say, okay, so the last effect that I have was four blocks, so for the next song, I'm gonna do something different, like left, right, or up and down, you know? So yeah, this, this, this is good. This is really, really clean. Um, have you taken this show and applied, or this show file concept, and applied it to, to live entertainment, as in like singers, dancers, performers? Like, have you, have you dropped this on a band as well, or um, does the workflow not fit that format? My show file is like a 95% made for for EDM. Okay. So we have um, another room where it's a uh, our lighting director Rain. He runs that room. His show file is like perfectly made for that music. So everything that I have goes with that music. So of course he has another um, tool for for when the DJ goes a little bit high, but. Uh, like all the effects are made for 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 hip hop and, and it goes perfect with that. So I have kind of the same in main room. Everything because it's more EDM. I try to make everything more EDM. Everything goes in 128 BPMs. I can't change the speed too, but everything goes to the beat. So if you're gonna run a band, yeah, you have to move the speed a little bit and find out what is going on. Right. But, um, my show is like ninety percent for made for EDM. This is awesome. Coming up in part four, Alvaro is going to answer some questions from Instagram and from a surprise guest. Be sure to check out the other videos in the Craft and Cocktails playlist. Until then, refill your drink. We'll see you in part four.